This has been a really exciting year. In the heart of Suffolk, a 7,500 acre agribusiness, which has not stopped at conventional farming. We've moved it on to anaerobic digestion, which has culminated in the most exciting year that we've had ever. So with the size of the business at Labnham Farms, one of the things that I've strived to produce is teamwork. And we have got the most fantastic team at Lavenham, evident in everything we do. Here we are in our field of sugar beet, which we're harvesting today. This is a nice example of our sugar beet here. So look at these lovely green leaves, taking up more sun, more daylight hours, making this beet grow into the big yield busting crop that we need. The key for the sugar beet crop is to establish it well, getting this seed bed in the ideal condition for the tiny seed to get away and germinate properly. Today we're planting sugar beet. This drill is the biggest one on the market. We're 18 rows. We're planting them at an inch of depth over the whole field to enable us to drill the seed in a precision drill it's coated in a smooth coating that makes it travel smoothly through the drill so that we get a perfect seed spacing. At the sugar beet harvest at Lavenham, logistics is key. We need the harvester to arrive, start harvesting and keep that machine going every hour that that's in the field. Annually, we'll harvest 1,600 acres of sugar beet. 700 of those will be here at uh, Suffolk and then the rest will be in surrounding areas all the way down to the coast. Here it's a huge team effort to harvest the beet to ensure that everybody is in the right place at the right time, keeping things moving. The health of the soil and the fertility of the soil are the most important things. So this is what we do hundreds of times every year. We use this small tool and we place it in the ground like this. A quick turn and pull it out and there we have a sample which we send off to be analysed. When the analysis comes back, we then use those to plan our fertiliser spreading. We apply all our solid fertiliser with a 32 metre Coon air jet spreader. It's a lovely piece of kit. Nick is driving this one today. He's one of our younger members of our team. We've brought him along from being a student. Nick's ability with technology is probably one of his greatest assets. Fascinated with the bit of kit he's got. He loves his role, he loves what he does. We must have good operators today and a very efficient switched on team. Here we have one of our sprayers, the self-propelled. This machine is 32 metres wide. This machine is fantastic because of the evenness of the weight distribution when that's spraying in sometimes tricky conditions. This machine alone last year covered 38,000 acres with James on board. Here I have a couple of examples of the nozzles we, we tend to use. Very low volume rate nozzles, often forward and backward facing, depending for which contact on the target we're looking for and every single plant that we have on the Lavenham farm here is obviously very important to us and needs all the attention to detail that we can give it. This sprayer is controlled by satellites so that once we've marked out the boundary of the field and we're spraying the centre, it will automatically know when that reaches the boundary that's already been sprayed, reducing the amount of overlap or misses that we get on the ends. This fantastic technology allows us to reach the precision that we're looking for when applying these crop protection products. Myself and the lads on the sprayers are constantly talking about the crops and having a bit of passion for the job is key, making sure that we hit that attention to detail. Our 
Our property portfolio at Lavender Farms is 62 houses. This industrial units that we've got here, DIY livery yards and other rented buildings is so important to the business. We're probably sweating over 50% of our income at the moment from that venture. You'd be amazed to know what you find at Hill Farm. This was a dingy, dark uh, tractor shed with a diesel tank in one corner. And we've created with our team this wonderful workspace full now of performance cars. And they're absolutely beautiful. One of the most satisfying things is that these people are earning a living and we're also earning a living out of them, out of the buildings that we've got. Hill Farm House was purchased at a very good price. If we remarket that at a later date, we'll be able to make a very good return. This is an example of our business approach to our properties. We purchased this with Hill Farm in this rundown state. It's on the at-risk register and our long-term objective is to turn this into a three-bedroom property, working with the local authority and there will be a cracking three-bedroom house with a lovely view across the valley. This is another example of the Lavenham team. It's harvest, we've got two high capacity combines running with a full team supporting them to keep them going efficiently as possible. It's been a difficult summer this year. We've had rain on and off near as damn it from the second week of August. Here we are, got a cracking sunny day for the final day of harvest. The moisture's finally come down and it's nice to finish on a bit of a high. The machines are absolutely racing through the field and will soon be finished and put the combines away, job done. Euston Biogas. Our new project that we built to produce anaerobic gas from maize harvested on our farms. This has been a complete change of mindset for us as farmers to use the land, the farm, the men, the machines that we've got to give us a future. For Lavenham Farms, this is the most exciting project this year. To understand anaerobic digestion, AD, essentially it's three, we have three big concrete cows. This is what we feed into the tanks. It's May silage, which was harvested at Lavenham Farms last September. Perfect, 32% dry matter. It's just bang on for what we want for the plant. As you can see, each piece of maize is cracked or split, which is ideal for the process because it helps release the energy in the AD process for good gas production. It's feeding time at Euston. We top the hoppers up twice a day using the teleporter. They are then computer controlled fed once every hour to the digesters as they need to be fed little and often to help break down the feed stocks. We have to keep the digestate in the tanks moving all the time. We use propeller mixers, which is like a big boat propeller. There's two on each digester. They're slightly angled to keep the digestate moving continuously in a circle. There's also two paddle mixers on each digester as well. They push material down into the digestate rather than lift it out. Again, this is helps with moving and uh, breaking down the material and releasing the gas in the digester as well for the roofs. Up here on the gantry, you can actually see inside the digesters. When I look inside, I can see it all moving and bubbling away to make, so I can see the biogas is coming out correctly and by it moving we know it's agitating itself correctly. 
It looks a bit like a bolognese mix or a thick pea soup. More pipe work here. This is the exit of the digestate, which takes it to the separator before going onto the fields. And here's the first stage of the gas process where we're cooling the gas. The chilled gas from the tanks is still not ready for sale yet. We need to refine it in this building here. It's refined into biomethane. We're almost at the end of Houston Biogas story now. Once the gas has been refined and meets the national gas grid standards, it flows through this pipework, seven kilometers to the national grid, gas grid line. This meter here measures how much gas we're selling from Houston. So it's exciting because you're using our land and other people's land and our expertise to produce a good profit stream for the company and for the farm it gives us a sustainable future.